I am going to be putting on my general manager hat right now, and I'm going to be Ryan Poles for the week because I need to fix this offensive line if no one else is going to. And I'm looking at the draft picks that the Bears have. I'm looking at the cap that they have for the now and the future and how I can help right now. Today, I am going to go through three different players that the Bears could trade for, two being likely possible trades, and one being a Hail Mary, but that does benefit the future, and I still think, hey, anything is possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, thank you for tuning in. Now, before I begin today's show, hit the like button on this video if you want Ryan Poles in the Chicago Bears front office to make a move to improve this offensive line as soon as possible, along with commenting who out of my three trades that you would want the Bears to get the most, or you could comment anyone else that I might not have named that you'd want Chicago to trade for. And please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to help us at 18,400 before week four against the Los Angeles Rams. So let's go through our current offensive line, which is obviously the issue of why we're already trading for people, because currently our offensive line is Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Coleman Shelton, Nate Davis slash Matt Pryor, and Darnell Wright. Jones and Wright aren't doing a terrible job according to PFF, but we've all watched games. They, they've played a lot better before. And Jenkins, in my personal opinion, is not having as well of a season as he could if he was at right guard. I think the Bears should move him back, which means that we get rid of Nate Davis, which is going to happen here in a little bit, so stay tuned for that. But Coleman Shelton is just getting absolutely bullied around right now. Hopefully Ryan Bates takes over that if he gets off IR this upcoming week or the following week. And again, Nate Davis, see you later. Matt Pryor, good, but not the answer for the Bears. So far, this offense of line has allowed a combined total of 70 quarterback pressures through three games. Yes, 23 pressures per game for Caleb Williams on average, along with 15 sacks, so five sacks per game. Not going well for the rookie, and that's what's going to help him not help him get good confidence, build bad habits. Just overall, nothing good there, but thank God Caleb Williams can scramble a lot of things, because if he couldn't, we'd be in some really deep trouble. But today, I'm going to do some trades to help him so he doesn't have to scramble so much. Use those legs in a better situation when needed instead of scrambling away, which all of these will not happen, guys. I know that, but if even one happened, this offensive line would be for a huge improvement. So starting the day off, I'm actually looking at the center position and I'm calling the Carolina Panthers because I've already traded with them before and it's worked out pretty well for the Bears. So why not keep those vibes going? And I'm trading for center Austin Corbett, who has been with the Panthers for quite some time and is in the last year of a three-year contract. The Panthers did just win their last game, even though I don't think it really means anything. The Raiders came back down to earth and the Panthers are still a bad team. So they're going to want to keep rebuilding. And if I can offer some draft picks for the veteran center, I think that Carolina would absolutely do it. Not trading their second back to them, by the way, for this. Absolutely not. But a strong center, a good veteran center, and having a very solid season, currently ranked the 16th center in the NFL at the moment, according to PFF, with a 64.6 grade. Not earth-shattering, but better than what we got for sure. A 6'4", 305-pound center who's 28 years old is pretty athletically gifted and is a solid pass-blocking center. According to PFF, he does rank 64.6 overall grade with a 76.4 pass block grade, fourth among centers currently in the NFL through three weeks. He has a 58.2 run block grade though. Not the greatest, but a lot of centers don't have top uh, pass run blocking grades. So something to consider for the Chicago Bears, but that pass block would be absolutely massive because that would take a lot less pressure off other interior offensive linemen for the Bears. Currently through this season in 181 snaps, he only has one penalty, one sack allowed, zero hits, and one pressure allowed. His contract, he's currently in the last year of his contract with the Carolina Panthers, owed $8 million for the rest of this season. So not bad, and if it doesn't work out, you can let him walk. You get a guy who is still young, good leadership, and big that stays on this field, which is absolutely fantastic as our offensive line has been pretty beat up this year. And I would send a 25 fourth rounder for him. You're not losing much. You're not taking a risk. You're getting a for sure thing. You're improving the center position. If they want Nate Davis, send him. I don't care. But as long as we're getting Austin, that's what I'm comfortable with. Going into the second guy that I want to hit on today is from the Arizona Cardinals. And that is Evan Brown, who plays left guard, which, hey, look at that. That helps Tevin Jenkins go back to right guard where he performs best. He did, Tevin Jenkins did well in 22 and 23 at right guard, and Evan Brown absolutely brings that for the Chicago Bears. The left guard for the Cardinals signed a one-year $2.5 million contract this past offseason and is having a solid season with the Cardinals so far. Currently ranked the 23rd guard overall in the NFL 
according to PFF, with a 69.7 overall grade, which think about it, two guards on every team. Technically, he could be considered a tw top 12 guard in this league. He also has played for Shane Waldron's offense before and succeeded there as well. He would be an instant plug and play, can impact this offensive line and be a huge improvement. Standing at 6'3", 320 pounds, and 28 years old. According to PFF, very consistent guy. 69.7 overall grade, 66.7 pass block rate, and a 67.4 run block rate. Better than uh, Austin Corbett, but overall still not... He's, he's a solid player, and he's good across the board. I'd be happy with this for sure, and it takes a ton of pressure off Tevin Jenkins. Not only that, zero penalties, zero sacks allowed, zero hits, and only one pressure. That cheap contract of one year, $2.5 million. I would send the Cardinals Nate Davis again. I'm, I'm sending Nate Davis with everybody that I'm trading for today, so I'm not even going to say it. Along with a for sure fourth rounder. He is approaching 30 years old. He has had some rough years in the past, but he's off to a good start so far. And I think that Evan Brown could be a huge improvement for this offensive line because, again, you go with the left guard, you move uh, Tevin Jenkins back to his best position at right guard, and that hopefully helps out the interior significantly in order to allow less pressure up the middle. And before I get into my dream scenario of who I would trade for for the Chicago Bears, I would like to thank today's sponsor, my bookie. It's that time of the year again. Football is back. And my bookie is here to make sure you're ready to cash in on the action. This season, my bookie is pulling out all the stops for incredible promotions, such as weekly risk free boost on Thursdays, where you can bet without a sweat. If your bet hits, you win big. And if it doesn't, forget it. My bookie will refund your wager. It's that simple. But that's just the beginning. My bookie is giving away hundreds of thousands in prize to their Super Survivor in Square contest. Get your entries in now for your chance to win huge cash rewards. When you're ready to get started, use my promo code ANOTHER YEAR to claim a bonus that doubles your money on your very first deposit. You heard that right. Double your money with my promo code ANOTHER YEAR now before you even place a bet. So now going into my number one guy that would help out the future, makes sense, is cheap, and is one of the best guards in the NFL right now. And that is Dylan Parham of the Las Vegas Raiders. He he meets the expectation of size, ability, and agility, according to Ryan Poles, what he's been bringing in the last couple of years. And this right guard from the Raiders is a young buck that you trade for that helps his team for not only this year, but the next five years. Standing at 6'3", 285 pounds, only 25 years old, and has two years left on his rookie contract. According to PFF, he is a top 10 guard, an 82.8 overall grade, 77.9 pass block grade, 81.3 run block grade. That takes your entire line to the next level. It addresses right guard. Yes, it unfortunately doesn't move Tevin Jenkins back to left guard, but it, overall it helps because now Tevin Jenkins is focusing on himself instead of helping Coleman Shelton. But Dylan is an unbelievable athlete. Zero penalties, only one sack allowed, and three total pressures allowed. Fast, big, strong, stays on the field, cheap. Very good at picking up uh, double teams as well. And he opens up the run game on the right side. He's great pass blocking and just overall a solid offensive lineman that you bring in to improve this team for the long time. He's got two years left on his rookie contract, so the Bears can do what they did with DJ Moore and sign, sign him for an extension later, but the cap doesn't hit for a couple more years. I'm sending the Carolina second round pick for him. He is one of the best guards in the league right now. He's young. He's a for sure thing. You don't have to pay him for a couple of years. And overall, he's just the price and age that you pay a top pick for as a lock would be absolutely huge. Improve the offensive line. You would see this offensive line do so much better. Obviously, it still doesn't address center, but it helps out significantly. And when Ryan Bates comes back and takes over center for the Chicago Bears once he has off IR, that's where you're going to see the improvement of this offensive line. This move right here addresses the future. You get a young guy, and it looks great in a for sure lot. I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Obviously, one of these could have anything's possible. Any given Sunday, anything is possible if you put it out there. And I'm trying to speak one of these into existence to help the Chicago Bears offensive line. 
We need a ton of help. We can't let Caleb Williams get hurt anymore. We need to get the run game going. We need to start winning some ball games. And we have a huge game against the LA Rams this upcoming week. Bears make the trade on Wednesday. That's two or three practices that whoever it is gets in understands the basic principles and also if it's it ends up being evan brown which in my personal opinion makes the most sets sex sense which makes the most sense best bang for your buck that would be huge he already knows this offense instant plug and play and the bears start getting more protection for caleb williams i want to hear your guys thoughts in the comment section below again like this video if you want the bears to get a new offensive lineman comment out of the three who you want or if they weren't named who you would want and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but with that thank you as always for tuning in this episode of just another year chicago bears my name is nick brody and as always bear down baby